Hello everyone, welcome to another audio blog by Matthew McKenzie, a carer from Lewisham working with the South London and Morsley along with Slam Twigops to promote services and keep carers, service users and health professionals informed. You can check out our Facebook page which usually has daily news updates on mental health in and around South London. We, s we sometimes upload photos to Facebook and we love likes and discussions. Feel free to follow Sam Twigop's Twitter page on updates and perhaps retweet anything you feel interested in. Or for more in-depth details you can follow Sam Twigop's blog which sometimes has similar updates to our Facebook page but has more in-depth topics on many updates concerning mental health and health communities in and around, Lond and in around uh, South London. If you want to get your voice heard on South London and Morsley services, feel free to become a member on their site. Uh, you can fill in your details online or download the form for membership details. Uh, it only takes a minute to do so. When you become a member, you can uh, elect governors, um, get your voice heard, and be kept up to uh, be kept up to date with events and news, and receive member discounts. Anyway, enough of the advertising, let's move on to an event I went to that took place over at the Morsley Learning Centre over in Southwark. The event was called the Community Mental Wellbeing Event and it was a participation with the SDA Centre and Morsley Learning. The event was on the 23rd of August uh, 2013 and ran from 10am till 4pm. However, what was the event about? The event was to provide access to a range of activities and information which aimed to promote well mental well-being. The event was free and open to all service users, carers and members of the lo local community. The event also displayed work and information about the Estia Centre um, and what they do um, and I'll give you a bit more information on that soon. The event took place in what was called the Pilowski room area, which has around about two fairly large rooms with state of the art equipment and a dining area. There was um, quite a good turnout at the event, and I noticed more and more people kept turning up throughout the day. My first interest was to find out more from the stalls that were that was shown at the event. When I arrived I, I took a good look around the large area and I noticed all sorts of activities were going on. I noticed in the corner of the area there was a group of people doing arts and crafts. Some women I noticed along to the other side of the room were getting beauty treatments and massages and others were just talking and relaxing. <coughs> I, uh, I went over to have a closer look at the beauty stalls, although to be honest, I'm, I could not have any treatment for my hands, obviously. Um, but I did notice some were getting hand massages, and I could have tried that at least, I suppose. Uh, in the other room, I met someone called Kate Snowden, who works at the Barnet and Harringate Trust. Now, she's a dance movement therapist with three years training. Uh, she, also, um, is a, she also was doing reiki sessions, and l later on that day, she was running a dance therapy session. And she actually had run a dance therapy session in the, in the morning, which I missed. Um, and she was running another, as I mentioned before, but I couldn't stay for that session. I then headed back to the stalls which was perhaps one of the main reasons I decided to come to the event to get to, you know, just get information about what they do there. So the next stall I visited was from the psychological services team and I, I think I remember spoke, speaking to a lady called Barbara Barter who joined the team two and a half years ago. Now their remit is with those who have learning disabilities who may also have mental health difficulties, but I believe they do work with those who just have learning disabilities as well. 
They work with staff, teams, families and provide individual therapy, family therapy and often work with those who have challenging needs. Now they work in a large network which means they can work with speech therapists, occupational therapists and staff. They usually have one or two referrals a week of those with learning disabilities. Now they have teams in Lambeth based in Phoenix House, Lewisham over at Brownhill Road and Southwark at the CTC building over in uh, Morsley Hospital. I picked up one of their booklets on coping strategies which, has, which is a guide of things you can do when you feel angry and wish to calm down. The guide in the leaflet was very, was, you know, very simple and although it seemed to be aimed at learning disabilities I, I think anyone can use the booklet. The pictures in the booklet stuck in my mind and I will probably use those techniques, they seem quite effective. The next stall I visited was run by Elise Donnell uh, who works at Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital. Now she's a speech and language therapist and her stall provides information from the adults with learning, uh, learning disabilities health team. The team works with adults who have mental health problems and learning disabilities but again they also work with adults who don't have mental health problems but have learning disabilities. Again uh, this service has teams in Lambeth of Townley Road, Southwark again on Townley Road and Lewisham of Brownhill Road. Now their team helps those who are over 18 and have a learning disability. They can help them by providing the following advice to keep healthy, help to see their GP and other health services, help with hearing problems and communication, help to live independently as possible, help with eating and drinking, help to sit and lie down especially if wheelchair bound. I noticed that stall had some interesting workshops for adults with learning disabilities coming up in September 2013 plus outings and other interesting activities. Now if you're in Lambeth it's worth contacting Lambeth Mencap for more details. I then bumped into Mali Halley and Julie Odeli from IAPS over in Lewisham. Now, IAPS stands for Improving Access to Psychological Therapies. They visited uh, the event to check out what was on offer and to pick up information and make some connections. I then spoke to people who attended the event and asked them what they thought of the event. Most were impressed but another lady was actually checking out how the event was run and planning to set up a bigger event later on. Um, I think she was from Lambeth Mencap. Uh, yeah, that's correct. That is Lambeth Mencap and her name was uh, Charmaine Bins. I believe she recently had run a, a sports day where I believe 120 had participated. I decided to have some lunch, which was very tasty but I tended to drink more than I ate because the day was quite hot. We then got treated to some music from someone I think who had uh, a sight impairment. We actually played uh, the keyboard extremely well. I couldn't actually believe how well he played. Um, I wish I had asked for his name. The next stall I visited was from those who helped partner with the Learning Centre to bring this event. Um, their stall was quite big and this was from the Estia Centre. I spoke to the lady that was running the store um, at the time and uh, her name was Sarah Halls and I asked her you know what what they did and perhaps you can actually check out their site. Now the Estia Centre is a training research and development resource for those who support adults with learning disabilities and additional mental health needs. They are based at Morsley Hospital Denmark Hill and is an integral part of the local services for people with learning disabilities provided by South London and Morsley NHS Foundation Trust. 
They are also part of King's College London, Institute of Psychiatry, Forensic and Neurodevelopmental Sciences and Health Services and Population Research Departments. Now they aim to support the development of a competent workforce from support staff to experienced managers from a variety of services by working in close collaboration with clinical services. They also aim to improve the care of people with learning disabilities, especially those with additional mental health and challenging needs through evidence-based practice. On the stall, they were providing a large amount of resource material. One side of the stall was for training, and the other side was, I believe, about what they do. I picked up a booklet called the Astia Centre Celebrating 10 Years and one of the visitors um, at the stall had learning disabilities who actually pointed to the photo shown on the booklet and I remember Sarah speaking to him saying yes that is one of our doctors. I could only smile as I realized how close the connection is between those with learning disabilities and the mental health services the STEER Centre provides. The STEER Centre also had um, have a list of publications that they produce, uh, which some which are downloaded for free and others um, that you can pay for. And you can get the list of publications from a site called pavpav.com. Well then, what did I think of the community mental well-being event. I think the event turned out quite well. Um, I did not stay as long as I'd wished to, but I did enjoy speaking to others at the event on what services they provide for people with challenging mental health needs and also having learning difficulties. Those who have learning difficulties must have a quite um, a tough time as it is already and I'm not sure if mental health problems can be brought on quickly because of the disabilities they have. But it is encouraging to see services that provide and promote all around mental health needs for those people. I really do hope that there are more events like this in future. And I thank you for listening to an audio blog by Matthew McKenzie. And do not forget to check out Slam Twig Ops on Facebook or our blog, which is on WordPress, and Twitter. Um, you can check out our Twitter channel, or go along and view um, our YouTube channel if you don't like too much reading. Thank you again, and goodbye.